In anticipation of a requirement to breach an enemy minefield, the battle group has been assigned explosive lane-clearing munitions to back up its roller and plow-equipped tanks. This munition has been provided through normal replenishment activities and is easily handled by resupply vehicles. It has undergone its basic preparations for firing in the division administrative area. Contact has been made with the enemy, and the leading elements have encountered a minefield. The battle group commander will breach two lanes across the minefield using his assigned explosive lane-clearing charges and briefs the supporting engineer troop commander on the requirement. The troop commander, in turn, issues a warning order for the operation, which details the engineer elements that will fire the munition and a forward RV location for the handover and final preparation of the charges. RV activities include the hookup of the trailer to the towing unit, checks for continuity, and the final arming of the firing mechanism. The process takes approximately one hour, and any vehicle with a 24-volt electrical system and the capability to adapt the quick-release tow hitch can be used to fire the munition. The two firing teams with their prepared equipment remain at the RV awaiting final orders. In the meantime, the engineer recce sergeant goes forward to locate sites from where the lane-clearing charges are to be fired. Approaches and the firing sites should be chosen to give the towing vehicle and munitions trailer a degree of concealment and allow them to be properly lined up with the desired direction of the lane. The firing site should be on relatively level ground with no low obstructions which will interfere with the launch and be about 150 meters from the near edge of the minefield. The recce party also determines the firing data calculations which are mainly based on wind speed and direction and the temperature of the rocket motor propellant. The firing data determines the angle of elevation for the launcher and the approximate line of projection of the charge to produce a lane in the desired direction. Back at the RV, final orders are received. The firing data is applied to the launchers and vehicles and their trailers depart the RV. Under covering fire of the support force, the firing units move forward, pick up a guide, and are taken to their predetermined firing positions. The remainder of the breaching force and the assault force waits in readiness. Once in location, the final interconnects and continuity checks are completed, and the system is operational. Rocket continuity good. Trailer release continuity good. Elevation release continuity good. Fire now! The Viper is normally fired as soon as it is in position to ensure a maximum of surprise and to reduce the chance of its engagement by enemy weapons. created by the explosion,
clears approximately 90% of all mines with fuses that are susceptible to blast. When possible, the lane will be proofed by roller-equipped tanks prior to passage of the assault force through the minefield. Most of the undetonated mines are contained within the lane skip zone, which runs parallel to the trench produced by the charge. The safest passage for vehicles may be found by placing one track in the hose trench. The lanes and their approaches should be marked in the conventional manner, although the trench produced by the charge will initially provide sufficient guidance for the balance of the breaching force to complete its task. Although lane clearing charges can be quickly fired, some time is required for preparation of the munition from its handover at the DP to its departure from the RV. This time factor along with the strength and direction of the wind must be considered when planning the employment of lane clearing munitions. This production has depicted a simplified scenario which can be conducted in conjunction with deliberate minefield breaching operations.